When discussing electric cars and their environmental impact, we tend to focus on the vehicle's lack of tailpipe emissions, whether or not the car is charged from renewable sources of electricity or not, and what the carbon footprint of the car's construction is like. At the same time, while we may know the car's effective miles per gallon equivalent, a figure extrapolated from data obtained in rudimentary laboratory partial range tests, we do tend to focus more on how far the car can go per charge. That figure, for the most part, is the figure that we use to decide if a particular electric car meets our needs or not. If the range is, for example, less than 150 miles, 240 kilometers, some potential customers will completely discount the car. If it's more than that, most customers will consider it. So when the new Jaguar I-Pace got its official range rating of 234 miles per charge on the EPA test cycle, it slotted itself in the range charts above the 2018 Nissan Leaf and Hyundai Ioniq EV, but below the entry-level Tesla Model S, Tesla Model X, Hyundai Kona Electric and Chevrolet Bolt EV. That figure, I'll admit, is disappointing, especially if you consider that the Jaguar I-Pace is a luxury car that's Jaguar Land Rover's first foray into the plug-in marketplace. But when you consider that range figure comes from a rather large battery pack that dwarfs the battery pack in other cars with longer ranges, it seems downright abysmal. You see, unlike the 2018 LEAF, which has a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, the entry level Model X, 75 kilowatt hour battery pack, Kona Electric, 64 kilowatt hour battery pack, and Chevrolet Bolt EV, 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, the Jaguar I Pace has a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. Or to put it another way, its battery pack is 50% larger than the pack in the Bolt EV, yet it manages less range per charge. Granted, the two don't cross shop, but even in the case of the Model X 75D, whose battery pack is 83% the size of the iPacer's battery pack, its range is further. As many commentators have noted, the iPace is terribly inefficient. It is effectively an electron guzzler, one of, if not the most inefficient electric cars on the market today. But here's the real question. Will buyers mind? If the Jaguar iPace was an internal combustion engine vehicle and its fuel economy in terms of miles per gallon or litres per hundred kilometres was as different between the iPace and the competitors, then, well, customers would certainly think twice before buying it, especially if they lived somewhere where gasoline was expensive. But electricity isn't expensive, at least comparatively it's not. For example, the difference between filling up a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack here in Oregon versus filling up a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack is just under $3. Considering that's less than a gallon of gasoline or a latte on your way to work, it's likely that the Jaguar I-Pace driver really doesn't give a flying fig about the fact that their cars are more inefficient than other electric cars. If we consider that many Jaguar I-Pace drivers might be coming from other similar market vehicles, like the Jaguar F-Pace, BMW X3 or X5, and Mercedes-Benz GLE, their total ownership cost for fuel will already be far lower than it would be for their previous cars. So again, the net gain to these owners may be positive, even if some EV fans are tisking quietly in the corner. Where this poor range performance is most likely to impact the iPace, though, is rapid charging, since rapid charging stations are traditionally far more expensive than the power that you'd use at home, or even the power you'd get from a level two charging station. In that case, owners will find themselves paying more to refuel their iPace than they would for a competing electric car with longer range. Oh, and because of that terrible energy inefficiencies, they'll also be stopping to refuel more often and spend more time at each rapid charging station to boot. Buyers may not mind, but should they? Well, maybe. While the financial cost to owning an iPace over, say, a Model X may not make a huge difference, the total energy impact of owning a car is something that we should all be thinking about a little more. And if you tie that in with the need to become more energy mindful and the fact that we're still, as a society, using far, far more energy than we really need to, buying a more efficient car is a smarter choice when it comes to helping the world use less energy. If you're switching to the iPace from another electric car, efficiency maybe should be on your list of priorities. But if it's from a gasoline vehicle to an iPace, well, I'd rather you were driving a plug-in car than not. That's it. Thanks for joining me. Kakite. See you next time. Bye.